Welcome back from the ad break and let's continue with our lesson. So we are going to be looking at the first part of our lesson, which is intercept, where we are going to be calculating the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Let's look at the y-intercept first. So we are going to be looking at coordinates on the y-axis. It says they write down the coordinates of points A, B, C, and D. And as we are writing down these coordinates, we need to notice something. So let's look at point A there. We can see that the x value is at 0 and the y value is at a 5. What about the coordinates for D? We have the x at 0. And we have the y at 3. Let's go down to C, where we have 0 as the x value, and we have y as negative 2. And we have B there, where we have 0 as the x value, and we have a negative 6 as the y value. So we have written those coordinates down properly. But then what do you notice with these points? Now all of them are on the y axis. What is common about all of these points? Yes, you are correct. All of them have zero as the x value. So what can we say about any point that you might find on the y-axis? Because even if I ask for the coordinates for that point, it would be 0 and 1. So what can we say about the values that are on the y-axis? Yes, x is equals to 0. Let's see how we can use that in calculating. So let's calculate the y-intercept. Calculate the y-intercepts of the following. Now remember, at the y-intercept, x is 0. So what does that mean? That means that x is a value that we know. So I can come here and say y is equals to 2. And because I know x is 0, I can just calculate that there. And we are going to say y is equals to, we know that 2 multiplied by 0 is 0, and that gives us a positive 4. But again, remember, from our standard form, we have mx plus c. Do you remember which one tells us the y-intercept? Yes, it is the value of c. And there we have it. The value of c is the y-intercept. And as you can see, it is the same value. Let's look at the next one there. So the next one there is y is equals to negative 3x plus 3. But of course, we can already tell what the y-intercept is. Remember, you can either calculate it where x is equals to 0, or you can use the standard form where we can easily see that our y-value is equals to a positive 3. Let's look at this third one here, where we are going to use calculations to calculate the y-intercept. So we already know that um, our x is 0. So y is equals to what is 5 multiplied by 0? That is going to be a 0. And that is the y-intercept for that a graph, which means that that graph would pass the y-axis at y is equals to 0. Let's look at the x-intercepts. So now we're going to be looking at coordinates on the x-axis. And in the same way, let's write down the coordinates of A, B, C, and D. So we're looking at the coordinates of A, and we are going to write there, it is a negative 6 and a 0. Coordinates of C are going to be a negative 3 and a 0. Then the coordinates of D, that is 1, and 0, and the coordinates of B, that is a 4 and a 0. Remember, the coordinates are written as X and Y. Now, what do you notice with these points? Yes, we can see there that the Y value is equal to 0 on any point that is on the X axis. Now, how can we use that in calculating the X intercepts? Now, the following question says they calculate the x-intercepts of the following equations. Now, remember, at the x-intercepts, y is equals to 0. So, what does this mean? 
This means that we know that y is equals to 0, and we are going to work with 2x plus 4. Now, our aim is to find the x-intercept, meaning we need to find the x-value. So how are we going to find that x-value? Remember, we are going to use our additive inverses and our reciprocal or our multiplicative inverses, rather. So we have a plus 4 here. We are going to use the additive inverse, which is a minus 4. And what we do on one side, we are going to do on the other side as well. Then we are left with a 2x. And on this side, I am left with a negative 4 because 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. Then we are going to divide by 2 because dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half, which is the multiplicative inverse of a 2. So that leaves us with x is equals to negative 2. And that x is equals to negative 2 is the x-intercept for our graph. Let's look at the next one. y is equals to negative 3x plus 3. Now, again, we already know that y is equals to a 0. So we are left there with 3x plus 3. But for us to solve for that x there, we need the additive inverse of a positive 3, which is a negative 3. And what I do on one side, I need to apply on both sides of the equation. So we are left with a negative 3x on one side. And of course, 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. Now, the multiplicative inverse of a negative 3 is a negative 1 third. So that is the same as dividing by, by a negative 3. And what I do on one side, I need to do on both sides. So x is going to be equals to a positive 1 because we have there a negative 3 divided by a negative 3. Let's go to the last one where y is equals to 5x. We know that y is equals to 0 and we have 5x. So the multiplicative inverse of 5 is 1 fifth. So that is the same as dividing by 5. We are going to divide by 5 both sides. And that is going to now leave us with x is equals to 0. Which means that that line there passes the x-axis at a 0. Let's look at the next concept in our concept map. And that is calculating the gradient. So the gradient is the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. And that comes in the form of this formula here, which is a vertical change divided by the horizontal change. Now, when we're looking at the line that is given there, we are focusing on the vertical change. Now, look at that point there. That is the point 4 and 5. And we are comparing it with this point over here. And that point there is a point negative 6 for the x value and a negative 3 for the y value. So let's look at the vertical change. Now the vertical change is there a 5 minus a negative 3. Where are we getting these values? We are taking the one y value and we are subtracting the other y value. Now this could be done the other way around as well where we take the negative 3 and we subtract the 5. Either way the answer is going to give us if we say 5 minus the negative 3 that's going to give us a positive 8. But if we say negative 3 minus 5, that's going to give us a negative 8. In the end, when we are calculating our gradient, our answer will be exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which one you start with, but we need to say there that the one value minus the other value for us to find that change. Then we have the horizontal change working on the same points. So we are going to say the 4 minus the negative 6, which is going to give us a positive 10 as the answer. Or we are going to say there that the negative 6 minus the positive 4, which is going to give us a negative 10. Now what you need to be careful of here is that if with the vertical change, I am going to start with this y value and subtract 
the other y value, then when I'm doing the horizontal change, I need to again start with the coordinate that I initially started with. So it means I will need to say 4 minus negative 6. So we need to make sure that we are starting with the same coordinate, both with the vertical change and the horizontal change. But let's look at what this gradient will be. Now, if we use these top ones where I started with the first coordinate, then that is going to be our 8 divided by our 10. And we know that 8 divided by 10 or 8 tenths can be simplified to be 4 fifths. And that is our gradient for this line. And just to show you that it becomes the same value if I decide to use now the second coordinate first. So if I decide to start with this coordinate, the one at the bottom first, and I subtract that, that top coordinate, then that means we are going to say a negative 8. And that is going to be divided by a negative 10. Again, this simplifies to be 4 fifths as well, because a negative divided by a negative will give us a positive. Let's quickly go to an ad break, and then we'll see you just now for the rest of our lesson.